What's up everyone, do I have some interesting news for you today. And unfortunately, we also have some negative things to talk about because from yesterday's live stream, it was quite clear that a few of you wanted me to talk about this. So we will be moving on and talking about a few things. But first of all, let's jump straight into the news. Now, I love to say VR is getting more popular. As a VR enthusiast, it's great to see the community grow. But the truth is you only see how much it's grown and how fast it's growing when you see the numbers. So. I was scrolling through Upload VR, and when I noticed that it said that one out of four headsets on Steam VR are Oculus Quest 2s, it just, it's honestly unbelievable how far the Oculus Quest 2 has brought the VR community. And a lot of people keep telling me that most people that have a Quest 2 don't use it for PC VR. Yeah, you know what? That would make sense. A lot of people are buying it for the standalone. A lot of people are buying it because it doesn't require a PC. But these numbers truly show you that there is such a huge amount of people using the Quest 2 for PC VR, which makes it so much worse that the thing that is happening that we're going to talk about later is happening. But those numbers are insane. And I actually have something that came in that we're going to be talking about when UPS brings the rest of my packages. You guys on the live stream yesterday know exactly what's up. But the Quest 2 is the most used headset right now, I would say, ever. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Now, this one is really cool, according to me. The more people we have using VR, the more people we have using AR and just XR in general, the more it will be used for practical use cases, you know, use case scenarios where it's actually being used to help people work, to help people meet up, especially when they can't right now, maybe do online classes, things like that. Well, if you guys are a fan of The Mandalorian, you're going to be quite excited to hear that the Oculus Quest 2 was used for set design. Yeah, I mean, how cool is that? It, it honestly just makes me wonder how cool that must be, you know, working on a set design and having it right in front of you and being able to see it. I wonder how helpful that is for the people working on set design. I wonder if we have any people working on set design right now in the comment section. Please let me know. Does this actually help your workflow? Does it like allow you to see things that you maybe wouldn't be able to see on a normal flat screen? Because I can only imagine how much detail that can bring out and how much that can help the illustrators, the people that are doing that set design, really see what they're working on and maybe bring up ideas that they wouldn't normally have. It's unbelievable. I feel like this is going to help in the future for more realistic set design or more creative set design. Again, I'm not a set designer, but I'm sure we have some people in the comment section that know what they're talking about way more than I do. It's just really cool. And I feel like a lot of you are going to think it's really cool as well. So I wanted to get that out there. I'm really excited for this, you know, it being used for more practical uses and things like that. It's really cool to see, you know, as a as a nerd, as a geek, I love to see new technologies kind of go out into the mainstream and be used as just normal daily part of our lives. Now, this one is another case of a practical use case for AR for VR. Microsoft has signed a $22 billion contract with the US Army to bring the HoloLens 2 tech to the battlefield. This is quite interesting. Just another use case scenario of a practical use case for AR. Like it can augment your reality. It can really help you kind of increase your senses. Does that make any sense? Or am I just being stupid now? It can really help you out. Like it's, it's gonna be our, like our fifth sense. How many senses do humans have? Okay, so apparently we have five senses. So this is gonna be like our sixth sense, but apparently we have more than five senses according to the internet. You know what? I'm not going into this. I'm not a professional, but you get what I'm trying to say. Biotech, you know, like when you kind of upgrade your own body using technology, I don't know if I'm like all in for that or I'm like all away for that. I don't know. It's, it's kind of creepy right now. It's not 100% something I would do to myself. We're just not at that point just yet, but it is something to think about for the future because it's going to start happening more and more. It has really, really helped so many people. And I have a family member who this is currently helping, who technology is helping in, in their daily lives. And seeing that is, is honestly unbelievable. And chances are that without this technology, it would be much, much harder for them. It's really, really cool. But again, I'm not I'm not 100% there just yet. I'm not going to go implanting chips into my arm. No, 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 no. 
It's just a really exciting conversation to bring up. However, what isn't an exciting conversation to bring up is all the issues the Oculus Quest 2 has been having on version 27. And I really want to bring this up because I am, I feel the voice of the people. I, the people bring their concerns to me and I voice them, you know? <laughs> and yesterday during the live stream, it was quite clear that a lot of you were having issues with version 27. You're not alone. Myself, I'm having issues with version 27. And Steve knows, you guys know Steve knows? If you don't, make sure to check out his channel. He's having issues with version 27, and he's actually sent over a video for us to take a look at of him having issues with version 27. He was saying he was trying to actually open apps and they just straight up wouldn't open. Recording is super choppy on version 27. I can confirm that. The recording looks fine. Like once you're done with the recording, it actually looks okay. But inside the headset, it's actually unplayable. Like I would literally call it unplayable. Now, not everybody is having this experience, and some people actually say that they got version 27 on their Quest 1, and it's fixed all their issues. And I'm just, they're like, fantastic, you guys finally get to have a good VR experience. That's what you're here for. But everyone else is just having a horrible, horrible experience. And do you know what the worst part of all of this is? The Oculus Link has become pretty much unusable. Again, this isn't for everyone. I had a few people in the comments section tell me that it's actually perfectly okay for them. But the majority of people told me that they have issues with the link. And they've some people have even reset their entire computer thinking it was their computer's fault. And it's not. Version 27, I can confirm on the link, is bad to say the least. And this is horrible because we were talking one out of four headsets on Steam VR right now are Oculus Quest 2s. So what's happening now? Some people are saying, and I'm not saying this myself because I don't know where I stand on this. Some people are saying that Oculus is trying to kill off the Link so that people are forced to use their standalone store because people weren't using the store as much when the Link was working. And I'm just here like, I don't know. That just sounds like it would get a lot of people angry and it would just call, cause an outburst, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Virtual desktop seems to work fine. So at least that's working, and that's like my main use case for the Quest. I use the Quest mainly for PC VR myself, and I use it with virtual desktop. So, you know, that's kind of my main use case for it. So there you go. I, so if you're using virtual desktop, I don't know, maybe you guys have issues with virtual desktop as well now. Let me know, because currently I'm not having any issues with virtual desktop. But yeah, super choppy menus, extremely choppy recording. I actually saw a recording of Steve Nose trying to play using Bluetooth headphones, and it just kills the performance entirely. Like, what is this? Like, why? Uh, maybe there's like an actual scientific explanation for this that I'm not getting, but what has happened with version 27? I feel like, yes, I am going to talk about it. And yes, I am going to voice it because it's, it's bad. And the people that are having a great experience, well, I mean, what can I say? I'm happy for you guys, but the rest of us is, I don't know. I don't know. Um, hopefully they fix it. I'm really hoping on them fixing it. It's not like I'm going to send away my Quest 2 just because they did this, because they've done this before and then they kind of fixed it. Some people are saying they just, they've been having these issues since version 25 and it's never been fixed since then. So I, I honestly, it's, it's not good to see, especially as a VR enthusiast, as a person who's trying to push the technology forward and then people get the technology and this is what they get. It's just, it makes me unhappy. It really does, because this is not a good first impression to put on VR. It just isn't. And I don't know, it's just we have so many lovely people joining the community now, joining the VR space, and then this is the experience they get. I don't know, it just it makes me unhappy. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. Are you guys having issues? Were you guys having issues before? I, I really want to hear your opinions. And as much as I don't like having negative segments and videos, this is something we need to voice. This is something we need to get out there. And can I just say that we still have no microphone recording in quest recordings like they keep adding all these features but they still haven't added audio recording from the microphone in your quest recordings now i can only presume they're having some sort of huge issue with audio because the audio in my recordings usually doesn't actually sync up with my recordings which is just another entirely different problem of its own because i've got a phone here running android 11 and with root access or with permission from the company you can actually record the microphone with system sounds and usually with android it's actually harder to record the system sounds than it is to record the microphone and they've got the system sounds recording so where's the microphone it's just it's kind of confusing to me it's look everybody's gonna have their own opinions on this but I felt like getting it out there for the people that are having issues is very important. And I hope I did you guys justice. I don't want to misrepresent anyone. But uh, yeah, a lot of you wanted me to talk about this. This is my opinion on it. And that's that. Okay, now back to exciting pieces of news. Ubisoft has added VR support to its engine. Snowdrop. 
<laughs> I had to confirm that. I had to look twice, just kind of confirm it. That's, that's, that's cool. So Ubisoft has recently revealed that it has added VR support to its in-house development engine, Snowdrop. And this could supposedly be for the new Assassin's Creed VR coming out or Splinter Cell VR coming out. Because remember, we do have those two VR games coming out from Ubisoft when we're not entirely sure, but they are coming out. So them adding VR support to their in-house engine does only make sense. And the fact that they've done it now means we may be getting closer and closer. Or they're just starting on development because they've just added VR support now. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a developer. I'm not like far enough up there to know exactly what all these engines and things mean. But I feel like this is very exciting because it means we are getting closer to these games release every day. And I'm really excited to see these games because I've heard a lot of really good things about the Assassin's Creed games. And I have actually purchased them after hearing that. I haven't had a chance to play them yet, but I have heard very good things. So I am looking forward to this. Hopefully it's another big VR release. Who knows? And this one is just insanely cool. And this one is only for people with iPhones. Now, I don't actually have any iPhones. Um, <laughs> not with LiDAR scans anyway. And I'm not planning on getting any anytime soon. But for all of you that do have iPhones with LiDAR scanning, you're gonna love this one. Because remember guys, I was talking about video conferencing in VR and kind of meeting up in VR and kind of doing things that we're not really able to do right now, like online schooling and stuff. Well, there's actually LiDAR scanners on your iPhones. Well, that's if your iPhone is new enough to have one. A LiDAR scanner determines the distance between itself and an object by monitoring how long it takes a pulse of light, often a laser, to bounce back. It's like a radar, except instead of radio waves, it uses infrared light. And thanks to this, you will be able to scan the room around you, objects around you, and bring them into spatial, which is just absolutely insane. This is another case of bringing the real world with you into virtual reality. And honestly, that's incredible and absolutely amazing. Android actually has something like that. It's called AR Core. I don't think it's 100% there. Like it's, it kind of depends which phone you have and what camera you have. Of course, there's a lot of different Android phones. Some will do it better than others. And AR Core is actually really cool. I have used it for photogrammetry before. I have scanned my room and thrown it into VR and I was able to actually look through it in VR. It was really, really cool. It's, it's quite accurate when you do it a few times, when you kind of go over it. I recommend you try it out if you have an Android phone with AR Core support. And if you have an iPhone with a LiDAR scanner or I think their one is called AR Kit. They also have like their own AR Core, AR Kit. I'd say also try photogrammetry with that. Just scan your room, throw it into VR with any one of the 3D viewing apps, and yeah, just have have some fun. Seriously, guys, photogrammetry can be a lot, a lot of fun. And especially with VR giving you much more possibilities, it's really, really cool. I'm really looking forward to more software being able to utilize these extra features that we have on our phones, extra cameras, and seeing what they do in the future. But that is going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the news. I wanted to get as much out today as possible because tomorrow we're not going to have a video. Chances are uh, we might actually have one. I'm not entirely sure. But tomorrow is Easter. So, you know, spending with family and stuff like that. So just in case I don't see you guys tomorrow, I hope you all have a fantastic day and a fantastic Easter. And I hope you guys can spend it with your family. I know that that can be tough nowadays, but I wish you all the best and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comments section below. If you guys would like to join the community, we have a Discord down below. We also have a Reddit down below where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that doesn't put a huge ad on everybody. This actually isn't the merch. My uh, 50k merch hasn't come yet, so I'm waiting for that to arrive and then I'll be able to advertise it. So if you guys want to support the channel, mysticalstore.com. And if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, dig my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.